Hi everyone, I hope you're all ticky to be. Today, I'm gonna to do the real life comparison test of the Weeble S and the Ronin SC and work out which one's best for you because they're both superb gimbals. See you in a sec. Now, if you're new to my channel, you'll understand that I'm no professional. I'm no Pete McKinnon or Sidney D or Levi Allen or anybody like that. I'm just an ordinary guy testing out stuff. So my tests are pretty much realistic and what you'll expect. Um, but what I do do is try not to do them in the studio all the time and try and get out and about to places like this. So to start off with, both gimbals are absolutely superb pieces of kit. They've both got the pros and cons. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to work out which one's best for your needs. I'll go through the different pros and cons of each one so that you can find that out. But the first thing to note really is that they're both absolutely awesome gimbals. They're great for traveling. They pack down really low and slight and get really small so you can put them in anywhere. And also the stability on there is absolutely superb. I mean, I'm no expert, like I said, but this is the sort of footage I've been getting on. Dancing upstairs, I'm So that's my footage, and like I said, I'm no expert at this. I've got to sort of work on that gimbal walk, or the ninja walk, as they call it. And there's plenty of videos out there of experts are doing that and showing you how to do that. So go and check them out if you're interested in it. But this really is to find out the pros and cons of each gimbal. So let's start with the Ronin SC. Okay, typical British weather. The wind's picked up, the rain's already started, it was bright blue skies earlier on, and unfortunately, one thing these aren't is waterproof, so I better get back to the studio to show you the differences between them. See you in a sec. I wish that I can call you. I need you now. Right, that's a bit better, we're back in the studio. So, we've got both gimbals here. I said I'd talk to you about the Ronin SC first of all, but before I do, just thought about it on the way back home. There's lots of similarities with both of these that um, will actually pay off for you. I mean, the first one to think about really is the locking mechanisms. Yep, they're on there, on there with the Ronin SC and with the Weebill Wee S. Um, a superb piece of kit on there because what it does is saves you having to use the old Velcro straps and things like that when you're traveling around. And then you can lock them into place. But it also helps when you're balancing. I've done a few videos on the Ronin SC around balancing. And I'm going to be doing a few more on the Weebill S um, later on when I've got different camera setups on that. So check those out so that's those um, the other thing as well is um, they've got tripod stands on the bottom of both of them I um, just put this one down for you a sec what I've actually done with all of them is put the quick release mechanisms on there and that is made by Zion and yes they do fit Ronin SC's which is actually pretty good besides that the other things they have in common is they've both got an app and that's where the difference happens with a few of them but we'll go into those in more detail um, and the other thing as well is they both break down and again we'll have a quick look at seeing which ones break down the most at the end of the day like i said they're both really good gimbals and it's going to be down to your preference and what your setup is and of course if i don't answer the questions in this video please leave a comment down below and i'll see what i can do for you so let's get into the ronin sc first of all now, I nearly forgot, I always try and give you an interesting fact, don't I? And before I finish off this video around the Weeble S and the Ronin SC, let's go into this week's one. This week's one is, do you know, if you hold your nose, you're unable to hum. How many of you are going to try that? Oh, thump him if he calls me Big Nose again. Oh, shut up, Big Nose. Oh, what? I warned you. So, the Ronin SC. Okay, the build quality of this one is superior to the Weeble S. I do, I must admit that. And also I do like the grip on this one. It's um, damn sight better than that one as well. Um, I tend to find my big clumsy hands anyway is that the fingers get in the way of the controls. The other thing as well, it's got a nice little joystick on there and it's really well built. It's really easy to use. It's not too sensitive. You'll notice I've put the control um, panel on there. It doesn't come with that standard. That is an extra and that's a benefit the Weeble S has got over this. So the benefits of the Ronin S there are some downsides of it as well which we'll go into but the benefits to me is the app itself is a lot more intuitive and a lot easier to use um, and also the fact that you've got three button setups on the front of it so that you can set it up to your own personal style yes the Weeble S does have its own settings on there but we'll go into those in a sec 
Um, the downside of the Ronin SC for me is the fact that with a Canon EOS R, when you put larger lens on, uh, larger lenses, sorry, on, it um, hits a back motor just like this. And, and that, unfortunately, I've tried different ways of sorting that out. And I don't seem to be able to do it. Um, but that said, I probably won't be using it for larger lenses myself. So why may you buy the GGI Ronin SC? Well, if you're a person that uses the app a lot and wants to use the active track and do the settings, which again, I've done another video on that where you can actually get it to move around without you operating it so it becomes your own cameraman. Yeah, definitely the DJI uh, Ronin SC is gonna be the one for you. Um, as long as you're quite happy that you won't be doing the larger camera setups on there like the Canon EOS R with the 24 to 105. However, like I said, I probably will only be using prime lenses on there anyway. So if that's not an issue for you, then definitely I would go for the Canon Ronin SC because better build quality. And actually I do like the handle grip on there. There is one thing though, another downside of it compared to the rope with a Weeble S is the underslung mode. However, if you have a look at this, you'll see that I've actually come up with a little hack and there is a video on this. And again, it's using another Zion adaptability on there. Um, it's using a piece of kit from an old uh, gimbal I had on theirs. And it actually works really, really well. And to be honest with you, yeah, if you watch some footage in a sec, I'll show you um, the difference between the Weeble S and the Ronin SC around um, doing it in the underslung mode following the granddaughter at home. So that leads us on to the Weeble S, doesn't it? Yeah, it's got a lot um, smaller setup. When you actually take that off, it's very tiny. But like I said to you earlier on, these here tend to get in my way. You can lock them yeah, by pressing the button down there. You can lock them um, and that's pretty good. But the um, underslung mode on this one is all part of the kit. And with those quick release mechanisms, yeah, it goes down like that. Again, let's have a look at that one working. So the USP with the Weeble S, okay? The fact that you can actually set up cameras like the Canon EOS R with the 24 to 105, I've had it on the 16 to 35 as well. It won't work with the 7200, obviously. But the benefit is, is this gap here at the back, okay? They've got a larger gap on the back motors, and that means that it allows it to rotate without actually touching the rear eyepiece, which is a big bummer with the um, Ronin SC. Also, the fact that there's so many cameras out there that are compatible with it. The Weeble S has got a huge compatibility list. Um, it's on the website, I'll leave a link down below. Yeah, but that will show you whether or not your camera will work on it. But don't take that as gospel because I believe that there's a few cameras that they haven't put on there that will actually work on it as well. Um, the Ronin SC has a similar one, but like I said, it's very limited on the cameras compared to the Weeble S. So if you're gonna have lots of different cameras on there or changing your cameras around, then it may be that the Weeble S is better for you. And like I said, if you are one of the people that actually use the underslung mode, yeah, and they put it into that mode there, and they did lots of low shots, then the fact that this is part of the kit already, and then like I said, if you buy these quick release plates, you can see how quick and easy it is to take them on and off, yeah, then you'll be looking for this one. And again, once it's down to that size, you imagine that in your bag, it takes up hardly any room at all. Right, let's break down the Weeble S first of all. It's pretty quick and easy to do, as you can see. Here we go. Right, that's how small that one is. So let's do the Ronin SC, really quick and easy to do as well. I like these levers on there, they're really good quality and it just makes the whole piece of kit feel that much better um, in the way it's built and things like that. And once you slide this off, the battery grip, as you can see, it actually makes it as small as the Weeble S. And if that's your thing at the end of the day and you want to be able to pack it away in smaller pieces, then it might be that the Ronin SC is the right one for you. Right, that's then broken down. As you can see, with that side of it, they're actually pretty comparable and they probably won't make a hell of a difference when you put them into your bag and things like that. Um, and then when they're strapped on the side of the bag, okay, once you've got the um, tripod mechanism on the bottom, they slot in nicely on the side there. And they, I've had them both on the side of my um, tactical bag and um, they, they just sit there nice and easy. Right, let's have a look at some of the footage side by side. What I've done is I've got some of the footage from the recent car meet, and if you're interested in that, there's a video on that just being released. Uh, it's a pretty awesome day out, and I use both the Ronin SC there and the Weeble S. Um, so let's have a look at some of those. Now, what I've done, first of all, is put it into the Vortex mode. That is what it's called, isn't it, Vortex mode? So let's look at it on two different cars, but then you'll see that actually there isn't much difference between the two of them. Here we go. There you go, I'm not any expert at it, am I? But as you can see, they both cope really, really well. And when I do these tests, I've actually got the Canon EOS RP with the RF35 lens on there, the one I'm filming on at the moment, actually, um, so, so that you can get an equal comparison between the two. So that was the vortex mode. Another one that I like to do is push into the car when the car door, doors open. So here it is on two different cars, and we'll have a look at that. Hi. 
So as you can see, they both cope well with that. So when it comes down to the usability and the stability of it, I don't think you can actually beat either of them. There's no reason to choose one for that. Your choice is gonna come down to your setup and whether or not you use underslung mode. And talking of underslung mode, here's two shots of me walking behind my granddaughter. First one is with the um, Weber S, and then the second one is with the Canon EOS R with that setup that I showed you just now. So here's a Weber less. As you can see, it's really easy to put it into that undersun mode and then you can just get on with it just like this. And here's a Ronin SC with that adapted hack on there. Like I said, there is a video on that if you're interested. And as you can see, it's just as comfortable and easy to use. And to be honest with you, I think the footage itself is pretty comparable, but you will have to take another piece of kit with you. So if minimalization is your thing, then obviously, again, the Ronin SC might not be the one for you. So if that is one of the reasons why you're going to buy it and you're going to do a lot of shots like that with skateboarding and following cars and things like that, then it's, it's a no-brainer the Weeble S is probably going to be the one for you because then also your hand's not on that grip um, getting away the um, controls and things like that. So they give you another couple of comparison shots. Um, I did it with the Weeble S again and the Ronin SC, same camera setup on there, just to do a little quick reveal shot with the dog. <laughs> There you go. At the end of the day, both gimbals are absolutely fantastic pieces of kit. The motors on the Weeble S are definitely stronger than the ones on the Ronin SC. However, that doesn't mean that it is actually better for you because the quality on the DJI one is definitely better. At the end of the day, if you're going to use bigger setups like the Canon EOS R with the 24 to 105 or other cameras that have big lenses like the Sony's with the G Masters on there, then you're probably going to need to choose the Weeble S because it will cope with that. And the good thing with it is that it actually copes with it zooming in and out. You don't have to rebalance it. When I tried to do that in the Ronin SC, I had to rebalance it. They both got auto tune on there. And I must admit the Ronin SC one is actually better than the one on the Weeble S, definitely. 100% um, it, it seems to balance everything out and you get nice smooth movements on it. If it's down to active track and using the app and things like that, then you're probably gonna wanna choose the DJI, yeah? Because at the end of the day, their apps are always loads better and I do find the Zion one a little bit complicated to use. However, the verdict has to go out on that one because I haven't got the image transmitter yet. And when I do get that, I'll do another video for you. So if you want to find out about that, make sure you hit subscribe. But once that comes through, what I'll be able to do is test the active track mode on there. Because the thing with the DJI one is at the moment, and I am trying to work, a work, work out a workaround on that, um, is that you have to set the camera on your phone on top of your camera and then you need to rebalance it and things like that. But their active track absolutely is awesome. It's just like the drones. And they've got a lot of practice with that as well. So when that comes out, I will do one for you. So there you go. Any other questions you got, leave them down below on the bottom. Give us a thumbs up if this has helped you. Hopefully it has. And I shall see you in the next one. Cheers and gone.